All right. Hello, class. I'm going to go through the gateway that we did in class on Monday. Uh, I'm just going to do every problem, uh, probably as one video, and uh, you can slow it down and listen to me go over and over. And over. All right, so the first one is the integral of 1 over cube root of x squared plus 2x to the 2 fifths uh, plus 7x to the minus 1 plus e dx. All right, so the point of this problem is just to make sure that you know your basics. Um, there's no rules from Calc 2 really here. It's just a matter of uh, making sure that you remember how these work. So the first expression is actually, um, let me highlight this here, this guy here, that's actually x to the minus two-thirds, so I'm going to write that this way, and then when I use the power rule, uh, I'm going to increase it to one-third and divide by a third. Now, that's kind of goofy, that's like multiplying by three, but just leave it. I don't really care about making it look nice here, and so like the next one, I'm going to make it go to five-fifths more, which is one, so seven-fifths divided by seven-fifths. You don't need to make it look nice. You just need to have something that you put into the computer which show the right graph. Now the next one, remember, x to the minus 1, that's 1 over x. That's the one time that it's different. So this is 7 ln absolute value x. And then the last one here, the e, e is a constant. So when you integrate, it doesn't become 0. You just tack an x on, just like 4 would become 4x. And of course, plus c. All right, so that's the answer for number 1 here. All right. Um, Number two was this integration here. Uh, and so this is very similar to an arc tangent thing I'm going to get to later, but this is actually arc sine. So I'm going to make x equals 4 sine theta because that's that 16 is actually 4 squared, and then dx is going to be 4 cosine theta. And a couple students I went to tutoring centers or talked to me about what, how they learned it, and they learned the next part a slightly different way, so I'm going to do it differently this time. If you don't like it, then you can go back to your old notes about how we've done it before, but this is just maybe an option for some of you who don't like how to do these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw the triangle now that I maybe would need to switch back at the end. I don't know if I'll need it, but I'm just going to draw it now. So sine theta, I could also write as x over 4 equals sine theta, my original substitution. And so that's opposite of our hypotenuse, so let's see it. Like that theta. And so the Pythagorean theorem says this is 16 minus x squared. What's relevant is that uh, that's what I have at the bottom of my original expression. So uh, if I go ahead and that's the adjacent side of theta. So if I go ahead and write cosine theta, that would be adjacent over hypotenuse. And then I can go ahead and say that my denominator for my original integral is equal to 4 cosine theta. So basically, it lets me sub out the entire bottom at once without having to use identities and whatnot. So what I need to change, I do need a d theta over here. So the things I need to change are dx here and then the denominator here. So I'm going to do that on the next slide. So it's not a space here. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. The whole denominator is the same thing as 4 cosine theta. And then dx was also 4 cosine theta d theta. So all this cancels out, but don't switch back to x. Okay, You're still in theta mode, so this is d theta. And then you integrate to theta plus c. And now remember that our substitution was x equals 4 sine theta, or we had x over 4 equals sine theta. So now if I take arctangent, I get theta. So theta is arctangent, not arctangent, excuse me, arc sine x over 4. Plus C. All right, so that's number two. Number three, several of these, the most common thing you're going to see on this is W substitution. So even uh, maybe try that first if you're unsure what to do. So number three is a substitution problem. So this is sine 2 thirds 7x minus 1 cosine x. Or sorry, cosine 7x minus 1 dx. So I know it's tempting, I said in class, make a simple substitution. But really, even if you made w 7x minus 1, like that would help a little, but you still couldn't integrate sine to the 2 thirds. So I'm going to make w actually sine of 7x minus 1 because I can integrate w to the 2 thirds. So then I get dw is cosine 7x minus 1 times 7. There's a chain rule there. So I do need to move that uh, 7 over 
And so then I get cosine seven x minus one. So, uh, and then of course there's a dx on the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap all that stuff out for one seventh dw, and then this is just gonna be over here. This is gonna be w to the two thirds. So let me go ahead and put that again on the next slide here. Okay, so let's see. The blue stuff is going to be 1 7th and a dw, and the yellow stuff is w to the 2 thirds. Okay, so now I can do this integral. This is w to the 5 thirds divided by 5 thirds uh, plus c, and then I do need to switch back. That, um, those fractions are kind of driving me crazy, so I don't care if you leave it, but I am going to simplify it. That's 3 over 35, and then uh, sine 7x minus 1, and then that is to the 5 thirds plus c. That's my answer there. All right, that's number 3, so that's a w substitution problem. The next one is very similar back to the first one. It's just making sure you remember some stuff, and the thing that you guys all forgot from Calc 1 was that if you integrate a to the x, you leave it the same, just like e to the x stays the same, and you divide by ln of a. For differentiation, you multiply by ln of a. So, for example, on that problem, it's 2 to the x plus x to the root 2. So when x is in the exponent, in that first guy, it's 2 to the x over ln 2. There's no technique, it's just knowing that um, antiderivative. And then for square root of 2, that's a power, so you use the power rule, which is increase by 1 and then divide by that. Let's see. <clears throat> all right, so that's all you got to do for number four. Number five is uh, integral from two thirds to infinity. Let me draw a better infinity there. E to the minus three t plus two dt. Now, the ones that have infinite limits on your gateway, I'm going to be pretty lenient. Um, I'm going to allow you to write things like e to the minus infinity is zero. So I'm going to kind of write it like that, even though that's not very formal mathematics. Put that in quotes. Uh, all right, so here, there's a w substitution that I'm going to kind of do in my head just because it's going to get messy otherwise. It's probably simpler just to do it this way. That 3 uh, is going to make you divide by minus 1 third, or sorry, multiply by minus 1 third. Because if I took the derivative, e stays the same, and then you would multiply by minus 3. And so now I'm going to evaluate and plug these in. Now if you think about what's going on with infinity, 3 times infinity, that's still huge, it's still infinite, minus that, then or minus, uh, making that negative, that's negative infinity, plus 2, that's still negative infinity. And then subtract, and then plugging in 2 thirds. So plugging in 2 thirds, you get minus 2 plus 2, you get e to the 0, that's 1 times minus a third, so really you add and it's a third. And like I said, that becomes zero because it's e to the minus infinity, so the answer here is one third. There's a lot of stuff there that's shoved under the rug with like substitution and limits and whatnot. I'm okay with you writing it somewhat informally like that. Number six, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it because it's in your notes from 7.2. Um, so this is ln of x. I'll go ahead and write out the integration by parts, um, what's what. You have to differentiate ln because you can't do anything else with it, otherwise we'd be done with the problem. So that's a du. Uh, make that look better. And then dv has to be dx. And then v would be x. And when you work all this out, you should get x ln x, that's uv. And then you're going to integrate, well, I guess we can do the whole thing, uh, v du, which is x times 1 over x. That simplifies to just 1, because that all goes away, 1 dx. So when you integrate that, you get x ln x, integral of 1 is x, and then don't forget your plus c. Uh, so that's number 6. Uh, let's see, number 7 is partial fractions. And actually, people seem to do pretty good about this one. So it's just a linear partial fraction. So you got these two guys. I'm going to integrate this, but first I'm going to do the partial fraction. So it's a over x minus 4 plus b over x plus 3, and then i got to cross multiply everything, so 5 equals a times x plus 3, plus b times x minus 4. So when I make x 4, uh, just to kill some stuff, I get 5 equals 7a, so a is 5 sevenths, and when I make x minus 3, I get 5 equals negative 7b, so I get that b is negative 5 sevenths. 
Okay, so let's go to the next slide and actually do that integral then. I got 5 sevenths on top of x minus 4. I got minus 5 sevenths on top of x plus 3. I'm integrating this now. And both of those are just going to be logarithms. So we should get ln absolute value x minus 4 minus 5 sevenths logarithm x plus 3. And because it's just a 1x on the bottom, there's no issue with the chain rule. And plus c there. Okay, number 8. Uh, this is again 0 to infinity. And this is a substitution problem. Um, I do want to kind of minimize how much I mess with the limits here. Just for our own sanity. So let's make w minus x cubed. Um, it's not integration by parts because e to the minus x cubed, I can't really integrate that. I mean, and differentiating it would be gross. So, Plus you see the powers are one off uh, here and here. So that's how you can kind of tell that it's... Uh, substitution, because here you get a minus 3x squared, which is exactly what you want. So the x squared is what you want to keep with the dx, so you get minus 1 third dw is x squared dx. So let's rewrite this. Uh, put the minus 1 third out here, and then you got e to the w dw, and then uh, the limits, let's see, if x was 0, w is 0, if you look at this expression. And when x was going to infinity, you cube that, you still get infinity. You take the negative of that, you get minus infinity. And now e to the w uh, is its own antiderivative. You get the minus one third with it. And like we said before, e to the minus infinity, we're calling that zero. And then you're going to add one third e to the zero. e to the zero is one, so you get one third again. All right, uh, number nine. Okay, first off for number nine. We did this in 7.4, and I kind of said, hey, we're doing this on purpose to save it for later. So for your, in terms of for your gateway, just memorize this, which is uh, this integral here. It's in your notes because this is on I think, all of the gateways. Uh, so it's slightly different than arctan. If you have that a squared, it's 1 over a arctan x over a. We proved that in class. Like we did that integral, and I said just memorize that. So I'm going to use that here. So um, I'm going to mix that with long division. All right, so let me write the problem on the next page. So this is 9, and it's x squared plus 3 over x squared plus 9. You can do this with trig sub, because it's the sum of squares in the bottom, but I think it's quicker to do use that formula I just gave you. So this is long division first, because the degrees match. So uh, you get a 1 here, and then immediately you're done, right? Because here you just get, what, a minus 6? And so I can rewrite the integral as 1 minus 6 over x squared plus 9. And 1 disintegrates to x, and then minus 6, and then I use the formula I just had, which is 1 third arctan x over 3. And then the 6 and 3 I can simplify if I would like to. I'm also just writing it again so I can stick the plus c in there. And that's it. Uh, I think trick sub would work, but really if you have that formula, it's long division to that. It's really simple if you've got that down. All right, number 10 is the doozy. Um... This is 0 to 3, 9 minus x squared. I'm going to use the same kind of new technique that I use on number um, 2. And they tell you here to make x equals 3 sine theta. So I'm going to write x over 3 as sine theta, and I'm going to use the same uh, triangle thing from the get-go. So we'll say this is theta, this is opposite, this is hypotenuse, this is adjacent, which that's exactly what I need, right? So cosine of this angle is this thing over 3, it's cosine theta. So the bottom, or not the bottom, the whole thing is 3 cosine theta, right? But I still have my dx, which is problematic, and I need to change my limits. So I'm just going to draw, hey, those need fixed, and that needs fixed. Uh, well, right here, see if I can squeeze this in, dx is 3 cosine theta d theta. So that you can already tell I'm going to get a cosine squared here. And then I also need to change my limits, and I'll do that on the next slide to clear up some space here. So let's do everything except the limits. Okay, so now you should have 9 cosine squared theta d theta, and my old limits were x equals 0 and x equals 3. And my substitution was x equals 3 sine theta. Okay, so a lot of you say I struggle with the unit circle. I, if you don't like the unit circle, I want you to memorize the graph of sine goes like this, okay, it goes up and down, and it, you just need to remember in the y direction, it goes 0, 1, 
zero, zero. Let me highlight these. Uh, my marker's too fat, but it's zero right at the origin, and then one at pi over two, and then zero, and then minus one, and then zero. So if you can just remember that pattern, um, then if you think here, let's set x equal to zero, divide by three, and you're really just asking when to sign zero. Well, in that pattern, it's right at the beginning. So theta is zero right at the beginning. In this illustration, this is theta and this is x, right? Uh, then you ask, what about three equals three sine theta? Well, you're really just asking when to sine theta one, and it's right at that first hop. And if you, if you can remember this whole period is two pi, then halfway through is pi. So then that quarter up here where it's, um, this quarter up here where it's tall, that's pi over 2, because it's half a pi. It's halfway through. So every every interesting thing happens every pi over 2. So that's when theta is pi over 2. If you don't like that, you can use the unit circle. All right, so these need to be 0 and pi over 2. Okay, now we're actually going to do the integral. So let's forget the whole problem up to now and say, all right, I got this integral, 0 to pi over 2. There's a 9, and then it's cosine squared. Okay, uh, let's see. So now I, this problem is not even close to done. I still need to use my identity before I integrate, which is on the sheet that you're given uh, on the gateway, which is uh, it's 1 half plus 1 half cosine. And the sheet has an x on it, but remember, you're in theta mode right now. So this is 2 theta, d theta. And then I can do this antiderivative. So let's leave the 9 out here, and let's do a half theta uh, plus a fourth sine theta, sine 2 theta. Because if I did the chain rule back to take the derivative, I would get it times 2. And now I'm going to plug in 0 and pi over 2. Now, you're plugging pi over 2 into 2 theta. So it's like sine of pi, which we just said was 0 on that graph, and sine of 0 is 0. So I don't have all the space to plug this in, but the point is, out of the four things you plug in, pi over 2 twice and 0 twice, everything goes away except for when you plug pi over 2 in here. So you're going to get 9 pi over 4, because you got the 2 and halves. You got the half here, and you got the half here. So 9 pi over 4 is the actual answer to that doozy of a problem. All right, that was very quick, um, although it still took me like 20 minutes. So uh, you can rewind it, go slow. If you have questions on it, please email me, or we can talk one-on-one -on -one about your gateway. But hopefully this helps.